Um, first of all, when you inherit from a class, you don't inherit the constructor. So what that means is you have to define a whole new constructor for the class. If you think about it, this kind of you also don't inherit the destructor. If you think about it, this kind of makes sense because um, in the automobile class, the constructor is a constructor for an automobile object. In the car class, our constructor is for a car object, not for an automobile object, because car just has the functionality of an automobile. It's not an automobile object. It just has this. It it, it just uses the functionality of the automobile class. So that's why you have to make your own constructor and then also you'd have to make your own destructor, but since we're not really using destructors right now, it's no big deal. Um, another thing that I should talk about is you might notice that, you know, you might say, Duncan, you just said that the car doesn't inherit from, you know, it doesn't inherit the constructor of the automobile class, then why was speed initialized to zero? Because that seemed to work out just fine. Well, what ends up happening is when you have inheritance like this, um, when you construct an object, it's first going to call the constructor of that object. So first it calls the car constructor. Or wait, does it? Wait, I'm not sure actually. I think it... Let's just add this in. I'm not sure exactly the order, but it ends up calling both the constructor of the actual class and also the constructor of the class that it's inheriting from. That's called the base class, is the class that it's inheriting from. Uh, let's see, I'm also going to have to add something here. I'm not sure which one happens first, actually. So let's find out. <laughs> okay, so I guess the first the automobile, first the base class constructor is called, which is why we're getting this C out automobile, and then the car constructor is called um, so yeah, so, so basically what happens is when you construct a car object, it first goes through the constructor of the automobile object, and then goes through the constructor of the car object. I guess that sort of makes sense. Um, okay, now also I need to talk about this access level. Um, you shouldn't worry too much about this. It's really not a big deal. Almost always you use public, but um, it could also be private. Now when it's public, what happens is um, it basically goes through the methods in automobile uh, and members, and if they're in the public access level, then they stay in the public access level. That's why we're still allowed to access these speed up methods, because even though we're inheriting from the class, it inherits them into the public access level. Now it also inherits speed into the private access level. So when you inherit using the public access level, it basically leaves everything the same. It leaves what's public public, it leaves what's private private. Now you do have the option of inheriting with the private access level. Now what this does is it leaves private things private, but it forces all public things to also be private. So when you inherit using the, the private access level, it takes anything that's public and puts it in the private access level in the car class, in the child class. The child class is the term for, the car is the child class here of the base class or parent class automobile. But anyway, when you use the private access level with inheritance, it takes everything from the public level and pushes it into the private level for the child class. Now often, a, often that's not what you want to do because if we did that this time, then we're going to get all these errors because it's going to be like speed up is a private method. You can't be calling that because you inherited with the private access level. So, I mean, you can think about it as inherits with private functionality, with, with like private automobile functionality, meaning that only within the class can you use the automobile functionality. Whereas if you inherit with public automobile functionality, that means that outside of the class, you can use the automobile functionality. It's really kind of tricky and it's not really that important actually so don't get hung up on it if you don't understand this public this, this access level thing. Basically you almost always use public. I mean that's just that's just what happens. But there you go. I guess that's the technical definition of why you use public and I guess if a situation arises when you would need to inherit with the private access level now you know what that means.
So uh, there you go. I think uh, that's all I'm going to talk about today. There is some more. There is actually lots more that we can do with inheritance. Uh, there are you know, more consequences that come out of when you have a class inherit from another class. But we'll be talking about that a little bit later. Um, today I just wanted to show you how inheritance works, uh, the basic premise of uh, inheriting the functionality of a base class into a child class, and then using that functionality, uh, you know, applying that functionality within something like main. Um, and what you should take away from this video is that uh, this allows you to make other classes, so if we have like a motorcycle, that could also be an automobile, or have the functionality of an automobile. So that way we don't have to write out the speed up, slow down methods multiple times, um, but multiple classes can use those methods. That's kind of one way to think about inheritance. But there are other things that you do with it as well. Okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to stop talking and uh, go ahead and end the video here. So thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment or send me a message. If you're having trouble with anything, I'll try to help out. Um, and go ahead and rate the video what you think it deserves. I'll appreciate any feedback. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you next time.